Hi, my name is Ken Weir, and uh, since you found this video, you must be researching nasal dilators, and I already know that you and I have something in common. You and I both have restricted breathing. Now, I don't know how long you've been researching nasal dilators. All I, all I know is that you haven't found what you're happy with yet, and you're still looking, and I wanted to thank you for listening to what I have to say and to show you. And while I know most people go directly to the internet, including myself, whenever we're looking for something, um, I don't know why it was on this particular occasion several years ago that rather than going to the internet, I just thought I would try to devise some type of little apparatus that would solve my, my problem of restricted breathing. And uh, I'll admit that I did use those adhesive nasal strips and the nasal sprays initially, but I wasn't happy with either of those products and also I wasn't aware that there were already other types of little apparatuses on the market. I, I simply uh, just went to the drawing board to try to devise some type of little uh, apparatus that would work. And uh, like I said earlier, I'm not sure how long you've been researching, but I can tell you that I've spent several years uh, devising different uh, ideas and, and coming up with different variations of the product that I have today. And that's the purpose of this video today is I wanted to, to sh tell you my story and sort of show you the progression of the Rhino Clip. And uh, I know that you're probably just interested in the final version, the final product. Uh, you might not be so interested in the history or the progression of the Rhino Clip. But then again, you, you know, you just might be interested. So what I want to try to do is tell you my story and show you the progression in a way that I hope that you will find interesting. And uh, to, to begin with, what we're going to do is we're just so, sort of going to fast forward to the end just in case you're not really interested in the history and progression uh, so that you can see the, the the final version as it is today and you'll also have something to compare it to as I show you the progression and the different funny little ver versions uh, of the product that uh, we use to get to where it is today. So here is here is the version uh, 2.0. This is the Rhino Clip. It's an elastic band. You see here on the top it has an adjustment point here. I don't know if you can see that. And then it also has an adjustment point on the bottom. Also has a little slider that goes on the temple the side of your head. Um, it has uh, an a little metal clip that attaches to your nostril. And I don't know if you can see that, but on the end it has a little coiled uh, wire there that makes the contact point uh, on your nostril very comfortable. And here's how you put it on. It's real simple. You uh, put a couple of fingers inside it, put it on top and the back of your head. You uh, slide it forward and put it, attach it to either nostril. Then you pull the back of the band to the back. And then at that point, you know, you can make adjustments while you're wearing it. You can make it adjust, uh, tighten it or loosen it. And uh, that's it. That, it's as simple as that. This is the version 2.0. Now, uh, what I want to do is I want to sort of show you all the funny variations that it took to get to this. And uh, so then you will have my story and you'll see how the Rhino Clip evolved to where it is today. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to just try to show you the, the history and progression of the Rhino Clip. And uh, I know some of this is going to look pretty funny, but uh, you uh, try to just bear with me and realize that w when you're lying in bed and you just can't breathe, that is a terrible feeling. I, I think uh, not being able to breathe ranks up there as some of the worst feelings you can experience. So just bear with me in, in why some of these look a little funny. But uh, uh, one night while I was struggling to breathe, I was thinking, good grief, I just need to have some way to, to allow air to pass through my nostrils. And uh, the very, very first idea uh, actually was like a little aquarium hose. I thought, uh, I, know, I know it's funny, but, but uh, when you can't breathe, when you've got a total obstruction, even though these, this little air hose is little, I'm thinking just anything, anything would be great. I just want to breathe, be able to breathe. So I would uh, try pr pressing this up inside my nostril and, 
and uh, it, it was a little painful. These have little edges on it. I tried rounding the edges. I tried everything to get it up there. And when I was able to finally get it up there, well, then it, it the, the the air passageway was just too tiny, and and it was like breathing through little straws. And and also I was concerned about it being dangerous if it were to actually go too far up into the nostril. And so then I came up with uh, just some little uh, black rubber a little flexible rubber hose that I would press inside my nostril, hold it up in there, and it, it, it did seem to help. Uh, it would hold my nostrils open a little bit, but uh, then these would sort of fall out one or two, you know, there was nothing holding them in, in place, and uh, I would spend several mornings uh, trying to search for them in my, uh, in, in between the sheets, and uh, sometimes I would lose one of these. And uh, also, Inhalation, it, it did help, uh, but when I was exhaling, even though this is a pretty good size hole, it still felt like I was uh, exhaling through a straw. Uh, but that didn't deter me yet. I still was on onto the rubber hose, and so I came up with uh, a single rubber hose that I, I had it uh, like so, so that um, <clears throat> it would press up inside the nostril and uh, it would... Uh, I wouldn't lose just one of them. They would sort of stay in place. But once again, I still had the problem of uh, exhaling and breathing through a straw. And, and, and it just wasn't as comfortable as I was hoping for. And then, uh, just by chance, I was in uh, the garage one day and I found uh, my one of my wife's little cleaning ones. It had a little, uh, uh, this little uh, uh, piece of plastic that used to adjust the wand. And I, and I was looking at it and I'm thinking, oh, you know, this has promise. It's got little bulbous ends and I thought they would uh, uh, have some comfort. So, and uh, when I would squeeze it, I felt like I could squeeze it, press it inside my nose. And when it opened, I think it would, uh, you know, open my nasal passages. And yeah, it, it, it really did. It did work. It, it opened them tremendously, except it, it was a little uncomfortable because it was uh, pretty tight and there was no way on this little piece of a pl plastic there was no way to adjust it and plus because this was inside my nostril I mean it was in front of my nostril when I exhaled I could feel my my hot breath uh, deflecting which made it very bothersome and uncomfortable and so then I staying on to that same idea I thought well let me come up with a, a, a piece of wire that uh, maybe it's not as adjustable during use, but I thought maybe I could adjust it to a comfort level that it would be comfortable to me. And also had uh, uh, two pieces of, of wire there to sort of try to make it a little more comfortable. And, and once again, uh, it did seem to do a little better, but once again, I still had that something in front of your nostril. And when you exhale with anything in front of your nose, uh, you you feel your hot breath being deflected. So, sort of went back to the drawing board and uh, I, I was thinking, why can't, you know, you just, all I want to do is have my nostrils opened. Why not have a little clip on there and maybe just a piece of string or something holding it open? And so then I started playing with that idea and that's when I came up with this. Uh, it's a little coat hanger clip. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, it's a little coat hanger clip and in a piece of string and it would go around my my head and then I had a little adjustment point on it so that I can adjust it to to get just the right amount of dilation uh, which um, I felt like you know hey uh, maybe we're on to something because this is accomplishing my goal uh, when I'm just sitting up I'm sitting on the edge of the bed I could get it to uh, be adjusted perfectly and uh, I'm thinking you know we're onto something now, except uh, the string is not elastic at all. And uh, when I'm laying on bed, you know, my my cheeks would sort of pull it, or or sometimes my pillow would get it, and uh, it would have a tendency to. Uh, I want to show you, but uh, it would have a tendency to sort of make it feel like a a fish hook was uh, pulling me in, and so I didn't really like that at all. Uh, but also, uh, because of the, the way that hook was, it also was a little uncomfortable, so I thought, well, maybe, uh, still still onto the string idea, uh, I came up with a, another little version that, that, I don't know if you can see that, but it uh, these are old, 
but it was uh, just a double wire which would seem to make it a little more comfortable but still once again I still had that string and it had a tendency to to make me uh, feel like I was being reeled in by somebody and then I was just walking across the parking lot one day and I looked down and I saw a piece of little shock cord and I'm thinking hey now we're on to something let's uh, do that uh, I used a little elastic cord and uh, I went with a different type of uh, clip uh, this is actually Romex uh, copper wire because it was very pliable and easy to sort of manipulate and bend. So I put that in and I, I made a little coil on the bottom of it so it, it made the contact point in the nostril a little more uh, comfortable. Uh, and uh, once again, I'm still thinking, you know, we've got something that's working, but uh, this band was so narrow it had a tendency that it would leave like an in indentation in my face that would probably last until mid-morning. One time it, it seemed like it lasted until almost noon and people were asking me, what is that, what's that, uh, what's wrong with your face? And so I thought, okay, um, I'm still on the right track. We've, we've got something that's working. Uh, let's go to maybe a flat uh, elastic band. And then I'm thinking, you know, uh, it would be more appealing if I had maybe a white. So I initially went with the white product. It, it was uh, white and it was adjustable. I'm using the same Romex type wire because I'm still just sort of experimenting with different types of products and tried that. And uh, then I was coming up with different types of adjuster clips on her. These are all homemade prototypes. Uh, so this was uh, that version there. Uh, I didn't really like, this one doesn't show it as much, but on another white one, uh, because it is reusable and you use it night after night, uh, the oils from your, your face have a tendency to make this white uh, start looking really dingy yellow. Uh, so I thought, let me go back to a black. I went with a black, I went with a thicker wire, and once again we've got the, that Romex wire. I'm sort of experimenting with different shapes of the hook there. Uh, trying to uh, get the comfort as, as, as good as possible. And uh, here's my adjusters here. These are homemade uh, adjustment clips. And it's got two, one on, on either side of the face to adjust. Then, trying to keep this moving along as fast as possible so I can keep your interest. Uh, and then I'm thinking, so I went with another one. Instead of, instead of having two adjusters, I just needed one adjuster on the back of the head. And then I tried putting little pieces of rubber tube on the end of the hook to, to sort of make it a little more comfortable. Uh, but what I did uh, later, I, I realized uh, I, it, did, it, it did seem to help the comfort, but, but then you're putting more, anytime you put more and more stuff inside your nose, you, uh, no matter what you do to alleviate your restriction, you seem, I, seem, I was seeming to add an obstruction uh, because I would still sort of feel that hot breath uh, coming so felt like we were on the right track but still needed a lot of work and uh, also because it was a single band uh, when I and uh, not not everybody has a lot of hair maybe maybe this wouldn't be a concern with someone that has minimal amount of hair but because it was a single band it would go across just the part of the part of my head that most came in contact with my pillow and my hair caused it to slip around a lot and so I was thinking, you know, I've got to do something about that. So, because uh, on the, the high part of your head, if it just slips a half inch up or a half inch down, all of a sudden now it's too loose or too tight. And so uh, I wasn't happy with that. Then I started experimenting with maybe we need a second band. Uh, this is when it came with two bands and still these are homemade little homemade wire buckles on there and here's the temple slider that 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 adjusted up up here so that uh, you can adjust the the lower band and also sometimes when you adjust this high or low it also would give a minute uh, adjustment uh, to help uh, your, the dilation and actually as crude as this looks here this is probably the baby version, the original version of what uh, the version that we have today because it has two bands and they're adjustable, has a temple slider and uh, has a hook. 
but uh, also uh, at this point I went with uh, I don't know if you can see that it's like uh, nose pads uh, and uh, they it's the same type of nose pads that you use on eyeglasses and I'm thinking hey you know this is going to be something pretty cool uh, it'll be exactly what I wanted it'll have a silicone nose pad to make it very 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 comfortable inside your nostril uh, and uh, so I went on. I went with that for a while. Uh, even the patent has uh, uh, mention of the pads. But later on, I determined that since uh, uh, I don't know if you could see that, but it's starting to get to be a lot of something inside the nostril, and uh, I was uh, I wanted to minimize the amount of anything that's inside your nostril. And uh, then I did testing uh, to determine that the amount of pressure to dilate your nostril is just a little over two ounces, but about 2.7 ounces. And so uh, I, I scrapped the idea of the silicone pad uh, and I went back to, uh, that's when I went to just like a little wire clip and it has a, a, noil, a, a, a coiled uh, band on it. Let's see if you can see it there. Um, and uh, the, the temple adjuster slides are, are so. Uh, there's not really, wasn't anything on the market that would accomplish this, so I was improvising. Uh, and so this is like uh, similar to what the finished product is today. It's a little crude. I, I know it's getting long. I want to try to speed this along. Uh, and uh, so here we are again, just different variations. Uh, the, the reason why these tails are long is because they were uh, a, a working prototype for a while and as I would adjust them, the longer you use them, the more the elastic would wear out. In uh, future versions you'll see uh, the adjustment is much different. Uh, so now here we're going uh, to a different uh, version here. Uh, this is, uh, has uh, a homemade wire clip. Uh, at this point, uh, it is uh, just for, for sake of uh, prototype, it was just stapled. Uh, the, the elastic cord was stapled. And uh, we've got that version here, but we do have a, a temple slider uh, here. I don't know if you could see this here. Uh, but it was just a regular buckle with a little notch cut in the bottom so that it can accommodate the, the lower band. And uh, here's like another variation there, just trying to get a little creative with, with a little blue band. It shows uh, this is a, the, the bottom band is adjustable. And once again, it's stapled. It's a larger hook. Oh, thought to uh, maybe add a little flair to it. Uh, went with a little uh, uh, riveted uh, buckles here on the end. And uh, that's Pretty much the only difference here on this clip is the little rivet on it. And uh, this was actually pretty much the, their very last homemade version. And then I sent it to assemblers and uh, uh, the final product that we came back with is the same product that you saw at the beginning of all the, the different variations. This is it, version 2.0. It's got the elastic buckles. It has a smaller, this is a machined uh, piece of wire. It's not homemade, but it does have the little uh, little coiled end on it to make it very comfortable inside your nostril. And uh, this is it. Thank you so much for enduring uh, this long video. I appreciate your interest in the product. Uh, we do now have a product that, that works incredibly. I hope that uh, you will take your interest level to the next level and, and perhaps purchase one. You're going to love it. If you don't, send it back. Uh, we'll send your money back. But anyway, thank you for your time and thank you for watching. I appreciate your interest. Have a great day.